Hi, my name is Dylan Hong, and I just got this guy in the mail. It's a 3D printer from a company named Kidi Tech, and I'm gonna do a live unboxing right now. Don't have too much space over here. Okay, here we go. Smaller box inside the big box. All right, so here's one layer of stuff. Um, it looks like there is uh, an instruction manual for the hardware. Some randomly selected filament. Um, I got blue, nice color. Spool holder. This smaller brand printers don't come with filament holders and that, good job. Power cable, USB cable. Oh, it comes with a uh, USB SD card reader if you don't have one already, that's pretty cool. Leveling paper, all right. This guy's scraping off the uh, your prints. Tools, all right, let's uh, put this aside. Pull out the actual printer. So the printer's in the box inside the box inside the box. They're really dedicated to making sure your printer is safe. Here it is. This is what we've been looking for. Just throwing boxes everywhere, you know, whatever. This notes here that if you're experiencing any problems with your printer, feel free to contact them. Reply within 12 hours. That's pretty good customer service. Gives you contact information. Yeah, the uh, instructions are pretty straightforward, so just I'll get straight to the setup. It is worth noting, 3D printers are extremely precise, so this sort of, this level of attention to packaging is kind of important. Keep hitting the uh, mic stand. I gotta get myself a personal mic. Alright, is that everything? Can't really see, you guys tell me. Make sure I follow the instructions. Alright, seven. Put on the spool holder and get that filament out. Awesome, that's exciting. I just want to show you guys. Just gotta screw this little thing in, I believe. Make sure the filament is in there first, so, boop, scissors. So this should be 1.75 millimeter diameter filament of PLA. PLA is, in my opinion, better for this sort of 3D printing than ABS. First of all, more environmentally friendly. And second of all, you're less likely to see issues with more affordable 3D printers. All right, so now I'm just gonna take the filament and attach it to the, uh, spool and 3D printer. <laughs> the next instructions say to feed the filament through this tube and then attach it to the extruder or the motor extruder part. Oh, I totally missed a uh, little tie. Ooh. All right, that's the last of it. There's this little switch that you have to press to allow the filament in. So I'm just gonna cut off the end of the filament because it is a little bit bent. That's how you uh, store it away. Just to make sure it goes clean into the extruder head. Oh, here we go. Okay, you can feel it sink in to the printer. And then when I release this, the teeth sink into the filament, which is a good sign. All right, there we go, perfect. Oh, before I turn anything on, there are also handles that I'm supposed to install. Awesome. Now I have the, uh, got some handles. So I'm going to power this guy on and see what happens. Oh, oh. So this guy has a 3.5 inch touchscreen, which is super cool for a printer of this price. So let's see if it's, let's see if it's good. This is actually a really responsive touchscreen for this sort of, this sort of device. It's pretty good. Okay, so there are manual controls to adjust the height and X and Y's and Z's of all the axes on this printer if for whatever reason you need to, to clean up a print or something like that, so that's really cool. And I just press the home button to center everything. It looks like it's doing some sort of calibration, so that's good. So I'm gonna hook it up to USB to see if there's any good information that this printer can send to the computer to get some good specs to set up comes with an 8 gigabyte SD card, so that's pretty awesome. I actually come from a background of a lot of 3D printing experience, and every printer is so different nowadays. Um, it's not super standardized yet, so even when you have this sort of software, all the operating system within the printer and the way that the software on the computer interacts with the printer can all be very different. Okay, so I just put in the SD card. Um, the instructions don't tell you to do this in your computer, but it actually has a bunch of instructions and software to use for this printer. So on that printer's SD card, there's an external or an alternate Kira sort of software. It's by Kira, 
but it has an option for an other printer. So let me use this. I'm going to put in some custom information. Let's see if the SD card gives me what sort of information I should put in. Okay, so first it says I should level it. So I'll do that first. It's actually a really in-depth instruction manual that I wish I had known was on the SD card. Basically, it just continuously prompts you to check in and um, then you just adjust the uh, underlying screws. Okay, so cool, leveling's done. Let's move on to the next step. There are extremely in-depth instructions for installing software, which you can definitely follow along if you have this printer and get the SD card. I do have to change some machine settings. So basically all the max dimensions are 150, so 150 width, 150 height, 150 depth, and that's all in millimeters. So it does give you a bunch of recommended settings in the instruction manual, and I'm just gonna load those in really quickly. So in the software, there are some really easy ways to manipulate your STL or 3D file, which is a really good sign. And it does look, by based on the instructions, they're not looking for you to directly do the USB printing, and that's okay, so I'll just use the SD card and print out something quick and easy for a first run. So I just exported the G-code file, uh, which is the file that is all in 3D printer language that allows the 3D printer to read the 3D file and print it in layers. And I'm just gonna see how this guy prints. So I'm just gonna use the touch screen on the front to interact and see if I can find the file and hopefully get a print started. So I just put in the instructions to, for this guy to print and it does some readout stuff. It tells you how much the expected time is, what sort of file you put in, and the speed at which it's going to print. Once you have the instructions, it's very user friendly. So while this is heating up the extruder and getting ready to print, some information about this printer is that it uses 1.75 millimeter filament, which is pretty standard. It's a single extruder printer. It does have a cooling fan for the extruder and the filament. The company says this is a very high precision printer and I hope that's the case and let's see how it does. This printer is compatible with different filaments such as ABS, PLA, PVA, and HIPS. I've used ABS before, but I definitely prefer PLA as I said before. It's a 0.4 millimeter diameter nozzle. It weighs around 40 pounds. And I would like to say the build of this printer is really great. It's super sturdy and it's very, it's very hefty. It doesn't feel like it's gonna shift around a lot, which is really important with 3D printers as a lot of the mechanics involves a lot of really quick and precise movements, and if things are shaking around a lot, it can throw a lot of stuff off. Each printer comes with one roll of PLA filament. I do believe the color is random, but you can buy more in different colors and different types of filament on their site, and I'll link to that sort of stuff down below. Also, once again, comes with a filament spool holder. That's one of the most frustrating things about smaller brand printers. A lot of simple things like that, they just don't do. The company Kitty Tech says that this is a great printer for things like independent research and education. And one of the things that I really like about 3D printing is it motivates people to understand how to do 3D modeling. I think that's really important. That's a really big thing as an engineer and just as consumer tech. You can design your own solutions to simple problems and sometimes really complicated ones too. At around $500, this printer isn't necessarily cheap in price, but compared to a lot of other 3D printers, especially ones as well built as this and with as many capabilities as this, this is extremely reasonable and I do think it's a very affordable 3D printer. From what I've seen, you do miss out on certain features such as Wi-Fi connectivity and printing through USB from what I see now, but those things aren't very important and I think you still get the full experience of being able to design what you want in 3D using any software you want, exporting it using the software that's included with the instructions that are included that are extremely helpful, and you can you can print your own stuff, you can make your own gadgets, toys, and I'll, I'll show off some of that stuff later too. I've worked with a bunch of printers at this price point that had nothing close to this in terms of quality. They didn't have this wonderful frame, it wasn't well built, a lot of them were 3D printed parts which, which can be good, but they didn't also have a touch screen, a digital readout. There are a lot of things that this thing does right at $500 that a lot of similarly priced printers don't. Printers like these are something that I'm really excited for, making 3D printing more accessible, something that you can actually have in your home and use. I'm gonna be printing a bunch more stuff. By the end of this video, hopefully I'll be able to show you a bunch of examples of what this printer can do, say what makes this printer different, why this printer stands out, and finally, my final thoughts on everything about this printer. So, let's leave this guy to print. 
I've been using this printer for about two weeks now, so here are my final thoughts. First of all, the print quality far surpassed my expectations. Even at 2mm layer height, which is around medium resolution, the successful prints looked fantastic. I started out with a lot of simple prints, but even the most complicated ones I threw at it were handled very, very well. The bed size is average, printing speed is also about average. I do wish actually the bed size could be a little bigger, but for the price, completely understandable. On the topic of being surprisingly good for the price, this is one of the very few printers in this price range that single extruder that also has a heated bed, which allows you to print with filaments such as ABS. The bed is CNC'd to precision to make sure that all your prints are extremely level. The entire frame is actually CNC'd, and it just results in this extremely sturdy and well-built frame. Exchanging filament is this really simple process of preheating, unloading, reloading, and then you're ready to go. You can pick up extra filament in these really big spools from Kitty Tech, and I'll post links in the description down below. Keep in mind that this is a 3D printer, and 3D printers jam. There are a lot of ways that you can try to prevent jamming, such as making sure all your settings are intact, read the instructions extremely clearly, but inevitably, there will be issues. When I did run into any issues, the customer service team responded to me extremely quickly and really worked with me to make sure that I could keep on printing. This is a brand new product and with that can come some bugs and quirks. Before getting this, make sure you're extremely excited about 3D printing and tech. While it's extremely great for the price, it's not just for everybody yet. Also, if you do need to unclog the nozzle, the extruder is extremely accessible and easy to work with. A lot of other 3D printers that try to be very consumer friendly don't allow you to open up the extruder at all and that just leads to a big mess. Other thoughts are that motors can be loud, the software is great both on the printer and the computer, I couldn't get the USB to work but that's not important to me. Overall, the X1 has a great build and design, really clean prints, and a great price. While it's not so easy that the average person would be able to work this printer flawlessly, all you techies out there would be able to work this printer well with just a little bit of practice. At under $500, the X1 waves in a new and exciting generation of 3D printers for the home even if there are still a bit of quirks to figure out. I would recommend this most to schools and groups like robotics teams that really want to invest and look into 3D printing as well as you techie out there that really loves tech and 3D printing. Let me know what you guys would print in the comments down below. Thank you very much to Kitty Tech for making this video possible. My name is Dylan Hong, this has been Dylan Hong Tech, like and subscribe for some more tech goodness and thanks for watching.